Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you guys how I created my do-it-yourself upholstered headboard. First thing we did was we decided which design we wanted to go with as far as the shape of the headboard. I then traced the headboard shape onto my plywood which was about 54 by 60 inches and then my husband cut the shape out with a jigsaw. After the headboard shape was cut, I then used sandpaper to sand down the edges so that they would be a little more smoother and wouldn't snag any of the fabric. So the next thing I did was I laid out my one and a half inch thick high density foam over the plywood. and I used a pair of scissors to cut off the excess foam. Now you can use a serrated knife or a carving knife if you like, but I opted to use sharp scissors. Once I got to the top portion of the headboard, I had to get a little creative, so I ended up tracing the shape onto a piece of foam and cutting it out with my scissors. I then took my spray adhesive glue and sprayed my plywood so that my foam would stick. Next, I laid down my cotton batting over my headboard and cut off any excess batting. And then I use my staple gun to secure the cotton batting to the back of the plywood. When you're stapling the plywood, you want to make sure you pull the cotton batting taut so that you have a smooth edge. This is how the headboard looked after the cotton batting was attached to the plywood. Now it's time to lay down my fabric. I ended up laying the fabric down on my table and I made sure that I ironed it prior. Then I placed the headboard on top of the fabric. I then took my staple gun and stapled the fabric to the back of the plywood. You want to make sure that you pull the fabric tight so that the edges are nice and smooth. This is what the headboard looked after the fabric was attached to the headboard. Now it's time to add the nail head trim to the headboard. I used a rubber mallet to prevent any damage to the tips of the nail heads. 
After placing the first two nail heads, I then measured the distance from one nail head to the other and cut a piece of scrap fabric to use as a guide. This helped me ensure that the nail heads would be equal distance from one another. While placing the nail heads across the curvature of the headboard, it started to become difficult to keep the nail heads from skewing out of line. So make sure you try and keep the nail head completely perpendicular to the board. This will ensure that the nail heads go in straight down and in a straight line. Now it's time to attach the flush mounts. These mounts interlock into one another, which I really liked. I then placed two mounts onto the back of the headboard and then the other two mounts I placed onto the wall. And the last step was to finally hang the headboard onto the wall. And here was the finished result. This was the design for our headboard before, and this is our headboard after. I hope this video was helpful to you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.